The Kawari Arabic, al al -Kawari, singular Kaji, Kariji, Karajits, or the Ash Shura Arabic, al -Shrat translit. Ash Shura, the exchanges, are members of a school of thought, that appeared in the first century of Islam during the first fitna, the crisis of leadership after the death of Muhammad. It broke into revolt against the authority of the Caliph Ali after he agreed to arbitration with his rival, Muawiyah I, to decide the succession to the Caliphate following the Battle of Sifan a Kariji later assassinated Ali, and for hundreds of years, the Kawari were a source of insurrection against the Caliphate. The Kawari opposed arbitration as a means to choose a new ruler on the grounds that, judgment belongs to God alone. They considered arbitration a means for people to make decisions while the victor in a battle was determined by God. They believed that any Muslim, even if not Quraysh or even an Arab, could be the Imam, the leader of the community, if he was morally irreproachable. If the leader sinned, it was the duty of Muslims to oppose and depose him. Some Kawari developed extreme doctrines that set them apart from both mainstream Sunni and Shia Muslims. They were particularly noted for adopting a radical approach to takfir, declaring self-described Muslims as non-Muslims. Topic: <inaudible> Etymology. <inaudible> 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 The term al kariji was used as an exonym by their opponents from the fact that they left Ali's army. The name comes from the Arabic root khrj, which has the primary meaning, to leave, or to get out, as in the basic word khrj, to go out, to walk out, to come out. Etc. However, these groups called themselves Ash Shura, the exchanges, which they understood within the context of Islamic scripture, Quran 2 to 207, and philosophy to mean those who have traded the mortal life al dunya for the other life with God al akira. Topic History Topic <inaudible> Origin <inaudible> 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 The origin of Karajism lies in the first fitna, the struggle for political supremacy over the Muslim community in the years following the death of Muhammad. After the death of the third Rashidun Caliph, Uthman, a struggle for succession ensued between Ali and Muawiyah I, the governor of Syria and cousin of Uthman, in league with a variety of other opponents. In 657, Ali's forces met Muawiyah's at the Battle of Sifan. Initially, the battle went against Muawiyah but on the brink of defeat, Muawiyah directed his army to hoist Qurans on their lances. Muawiyah proposed to Ali to settle their dispute through arbitration, with each side appointing referees who would pronounce judgment according to the Quran. While most of Ali's army accepted the proposal, one group, mostly from the tribe of Taman, vehemently objected to the arbitration and left the ranks of Ali's army. These dissenters, who initiated what would become known as the Karajite movement, wished to secede from Ali's army in order to uphold their principles. They held that the third caliph Uthman had deserved his death because of his faults, and that Ali was the legitimate caliph, while Muawiyah was a rebel. 
They believed that the Quran clearly stated that as a rebel Muawiyah was not entitled to arbitration, but rather should be fought until he repented, pointing to the verse, If two parties of the faithful fight each other, then conciliate them. Yet if one is rebellious to the other, then fight the insolent one until it returns to God's command. Quran 49-9. The dissenters held that in agreeing to arbitration, Ali committed the grave sin of rejecting God's judgment and attempted to substitute human judgment for God's clear injunction, which prompted their motto La Hukma illa li lah, judgment belongs to God alone. From this expression, which they were the first to use as a motto, they became known as Mahakama. They also believed that Muslims owe allegiance only to the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad, Abu Bakr, and Umar, and denied that the right to the imamate should be based on close kinship with Muhammad. The initial group of dissenters went to the village of Harura near Kufa, where they elected an obscure soldier named Ibn Wahb al Rasibi as their leader. This gave rise to their alternative name, al Hariya. Other defectors from Kufa, where Ali's army had returned awaiting the outcome of arbitration, gradually joined the dissenters, while Ali persuaded some dissenters to return to Kufa. However, when the arbitration ended in a verdict unfavorable to Ali, a large number of his followers left Kufa to join Ibn Wahb, who had meanwhile moved his camp to another location along the Narawan Canal. At this point, the Karajites proclaimed Ali's caliphate to be null and void and began to denounce as infidels anyone who did not accept their point of view. From Narawan they began to agitate against Ali and raid his territories. When attempts at conciliation failed, Ali's forces attacked the Karajites in their camp, inflicting a heavy defeat on them at the Battle of Narawan in 658, killing Ibn Wahb and most of his supporters. This bloodshed sealed the split of Karajites from Ali's followers, and Karajite calls for revenge ultimately led to Ali's assassination in 661 by a Karajite. <laughs> Later history For hundreds of years the Kawari continued to be a source of insurrection against the Caliphate, and they aroused condemnation by mainstream scholars such as 14th-century Muslim Ismail ibn Kathir who wrote, "...if they ever gained strength, they would surely corrupt the whole of the earth, Iraq and Sham, they would not leave a baby, male or female, neither a man or a woman, because as far as they are concerned the people have caused corruption, a corruption that cannot be rectified except by mass killing." In a similar vein, the 10th century Islamic scholar Abu Bakr al Ajuri said, None of the scholars, in either past or recent times, ever disagreed that the Kawari are an evil group, disobedient to Allah Almighty and to his Messenger, peace be upon him. Even if they pray, fast, or strive in worship, it does not benefit them, and even if they openly enjoin good and forbid evil it does not benefit them, as they are a people who interpret the Quran according to their desire." One modern historian describes Kawari as Bedouin nomads who resented the centralization of power in the new Islamic state that curtailed the freedom of their tribal society. In Hadith 
Among the hadith that refer to the Kawari according to some sources include a narration attributed to Usair bin Amra reports, I asked Sal bin Hunayf, Did you hear the Prophet saying anything about al Kawari? He said, I heard him saying while pointing his hand towards Iraq. Quote, there will appear in it i.e., Iraq, some people who will recite the Quran but it will not go beyond their throats, and they will go out from leave Islam as an arrow darts through the game's body. A narration attributed to Abu Sa'id al-Qudri reports, there will come a people from the east who recite the Quran but it will not go beyond their throats. They will pass through the religion just as an arrow pierces its target and they will not return to it just as the arrow does not return to the bow. A narration attributed to Abu Dar reports, Allah's Messenger said, Verily there would arise from my Ummah after me a group of people who would recite the Quran, but it would not go beyond their throats, and they would pass clean through their religion just as the arrow passes through the prey, and they would never come back to it. They would be the worst among the creation and the creatures. Topic. Beliefs and practices Topic. Assassination attempts Among the surviving Karajites, three of them gathered in Mecca to plot a tripartite assassination attempt on Muawiyah I, Amr ibn al Az and Ali. The assassination attempts were to occur simultaneously as the three leaders came to lead the morning prayer in their respective cities of Damascus, Fustat and Kufa. The method was to come out of the prayer ranks and strike the targets with a sword dipped in poison. Muawiyah escaped the assassination attempt with only minor injuries. Amra was sick and the deputy leading the prayers in his stead was martyred. However, the strike on Ali by the assassin, Abdur Rahman ibn Muljim, proved to be fatal. Ali was gravely injured with a head wound and succumbed to his injuries a few days later. The circumstances in which Ali was attacked is subject to debate. Some scholars maintain that he was attacked outside the mosque, others state that he was attacked while initiating the prayer, and still others reiterate that Ibn Muljim assaulted him midway through the prayer while Ali was prostrating. All the assassins were captured tried and sentenced to death in accordance with Islamic laws. <inaudible> <inaudible> Modern times <inaudible> Like-minded groups In the modern era, some of Muslim theologians and observers have compared the beliefs and actions of the Islamic State is, Al-Qaeda, and like-minded groups to the Qawari. In particular, the groups share the Karajit's radical approach whereby self-described Muslims are declared unbelievers and therefore deemed them worthy of death and their disinterest in Quranic calls for moderation. However, as preachers strongly reject being compared to the Kawari, the Abadis, a fellow early sect with similar beliefs, form the majority of the population of Oman where they first settled in 686, and there are smaller concentrations of them in the Mazab of Algeria, Jeba in Tunisia, the Nafusa Mountains in Libya, and Zanzibar. 
In the 18th century, Hanafi scholar Ibn Abidin declared the Wahhabi movement of Muhammad ibn Abd al-Wahhab as modern Qawari although he does not consider them non-Muslims. According to some Muslims, such as Abu Amina Elias, Karajits will continue to cause strife in the Muslim community until end times, and cite a hadith number 7123 from Sahih al-Bukhari in support of this. <laughs> Early Muslim governance The Kawari considered the caliphate of Abu Bakr and Umar to be rightly guided but believed that Uthman had deviated from the path of justice and truth in the last days of his caliphate and hence was liable to be killed or displaced. They also believed that Ali committed a grave sin when he agreed on the arbitration with Muawiyah. The Karajites thus deemed the arbitrators Abu Musa Ash'ari and Amr ibn al as the leaders who appointed these arbitrators Ali and Muawiyah the first and all those who agreed on the arbitration all companions of Ali and Muawiyah as kufa disbelievers as they had breached the rules of the Quran they also believed that all participants in the Battle of the Camel, including Talha, Zabair ibn al-Awam and Aisha had committed a major sin. <laughs> <laughs> Doctrinal differences with other sects Karajites differ with both Sunni and or Shia on some points of doctrine. Sunnis accept Ali as the fourth rightly guided caliph and also accept the three caliphs before him, who were elected by their community. Shia believe that the imamate was the right of Ali, and the rule of the first three Rashidun caliphs was unlawful. Karajites insist that the caliph need not be from the Quraysh tribe, but any pious Muslim nominated by other Muslims was eligible to be the caliph. Unlike Sunni and Shia, Karajites believed that Muslims had the right and duty to revolt against any ruler who deviated from their interpretation of Islam, or, according to other interpretations, failed to manage Muslims' affairs with justice and consultation or committed a major sin. Karajites reject the doctrine of infallibility for the leader of the Muslim community in contrast to Shia but in agreement with Sunnis. Unlike the more extreme Karajites, the Abadis reject the murder of Uthman as well as the Karajite belief that all Muslims holding differing viewpoints were infidels. Other doctrines Many Kawari groups believed that the act of sinning is analogous to Kufr disbelief, and that every grave sinner was regarded as a Kafir unless they repent. They invoked the doctrine of free will, in opposition to that of predestination in their opposition to the Umayyad Caliphate, which held that Umayyad rule was ordained by God. According to Islamic scholar and Islamist pioneer Abul Allah Mordudi, using the argument of sinners are unbelievers. Karajites denounced all the above Sahaba and even cursed and used abusive language against them. 
Other non kawari Muslims were declared disbelievers because they were not free of sin but also because they regarded the above mentioned Sahaba as believers and religious leaders, even inferring fiqh from the hadith narrated by them. The Kawari considered the Quran as the source for fiqh but disagreed about the other two sources, hadith and ijma, based on Karajite poetry writings. Scholars Hassan Abbas finds three categories of focus among them the strong desire of Karajites for martyrdom and dying for the sake of God detailed descriptions of how Karajites defined a just and pious ruler the universal tendency to blame the self for failing to establish the previous two categories, on the basis of women fighting alongside Muhammad, Karajis have viewed fighting jihad as a requirement for women. One famous example is the warrior and poet Layla bint Taraf. Principal groups Azarika, the followers of Abu Rashid Nafi ibn al Azraq, Najdat, the followers of Najda ibn Amir, Ajadites, the followers of Abd al Karim ibn Adrid, Abadis, the followers of Abd Allah ibn Abad are not the same ideology as the Kawari but share similar beliefs. Sufris, the followers of Ziyad ibn al-Asfar and Umran ibn Hattan. See also Karajite Rebellion 866 to 896 Mergia Salafism Succession to Muhammad Wahhabism equals equals notes <laughs>